Welcome everybody, my name is Jim Rosen. I am the author of Route 66, the television series. I was inspired uh, to do this book and this, my subsequent book, which will come out in November, Naked City, which was also done by executive producer Herbert B. Leonard and the creative forces of Sterling Sullivan as a small boy growing up in Philadelphia and every Friday night watching the show. Um, Route 66 was very, <clears throat> very innovative for its time. I think it's fair to say there's never been a show like this before or since because it was filmed entirely on location. It was filmed in 24 states and in Canada. And the way they would do it was they would film in the northernmost states in the summer and the southernmost states in the winter to avoid the severe weather problems. It began as a concept at the tail end of the Naked City television series, 1958-59 season. Herbert B. Leonard and Sterling Silverton knew that their show was canceled. It was a half hour show with John McIntyre and James Franciscus. And uh, John McIntyre left the series. His character was killed off in a fury car crash, which is something very unusual. And he was replaced by Horace McMahon, who later came back for the hour series with Paul Burke and Nancy Malone, and of course, Harry Velomar, who was <clears throat> in the show from the very beginning. Bert Leonard and Sterling Sullivan, who wrote most of the half-hour shows, were having lunch in Manhattan one day, and Bert Leonard began to talk about a, a, a boyhood friend or an acquaintance who was very rich, and he said, what would it be like if the two of them palled around in a sports car? And one thing led to another, and they came up with the idea and a storyline for Route 66. Now, to test the idea, they cast George Maharis, who had done two or three episodes of the Half Hour Naked City and had been creating kind of a furor in New York on stage, and an actor named Bobby Morris as two prototypes of Todd, Styles, and Buzz Murdoch in a half hour show called Four Sweet Corners. And George played a character named John Gary, who is a returning serviceman who comes back to New York, Dell's Kitchen, and finds his sisters involved with the gang. And the sister won't talk and won't reveal the, the, who the gang is. And, uh, you know, he sets out to right the wrongs. And uh, he's aided by his friend Link Ridgeway, who was his army buddy. Those two characters were the prototypes, because I think Link Ridgeway was kind of a, a preppy type or from a, a a nicer family and a more well-to-do family, I should say. And uh, George's character, John Gary, was from a, a poor family in Hell's Kitchen. So they had the idea of someone from the streets and someone that was more refined teamed together. They wanted to see how they came across on screen and related to each other, and they were impressed. But that was kind of a mini, mini pilot. Uh, the series, of course, was canceled. The pilot did not interest the networks. But once the show went off the air, Sterling Sullivan sat down and wrote a bona fide one hour pilot. And those two characters were metamorphosized into Todd Stiles and Buzz Murdoch. Um, George Maharis was already cast as the one lead character, so he became the transformation Buzz Murdoch, who was a, an orphan from Hell's Kitchen, a street smart orphan. And he worked in a dockside shipping business for a man named Stiles. Uh, the, Mr. Stiles had a son named Todd who went to Yale. So Todd would work on his father's business in the summertime and they became friendly and they bonded. Eventually his father had a heart attack. Now the, the business failed, of course. There's reference to it in the pilot episode of Black November. Uh, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, because there's differing opinions whether actually his father bought him the Corvette as a graduation present and then he discovered after his father's death the business had failed and he was left with only a Corvette or he sold the business which was fledgling and bought the Corvette. But anyway, he had no roots and of course George Maharis's character Buzz Murdoch had no roots so they decided to 
get into the car and travel. The original title for the, the, the pilot was The Searchers. And it was about two young men who traveled and were searching. And it was about unrest and uncertainty. At the same time, uh, they were uh, youthful, they were attractive, appealing. So that it, 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 the, the idea of Route 66 was very uh, appealing to many, many people because it was about a spirit of adventure, a sense of independence. They originally talked about using a Ferrari, and then they decided to go uh, with a Corvette, which I'm sure Chevrolet was very pleased about. And again, the Corvette became the third lead character. It was a tremendous symbol. And again, it, it represented a, a freedom that appealed to the youth and appealed to the elder, the, uh, the older people in America. So uh, the, the pilot was written and it was renamed Route 66, which really became a metaphor for the show. Only four to five shows were actually filmed along Route 66. The, the, the remaining episodes, there were 116 total, were filmed all over the country. But the important thing is Route 66 again became a metaphor for the show. The pilot was written um, and filmed in February of 1960. It was called The uh, Wolf Tree and retitled Black November. It was set supposedly in Garth, Alabama and they found a small town in uh, Kentucky that resembled this fictitious town that Sterling Self had wrote about. And the weather was nice because they were shooting in February. But it snowed eventually there in Kentucky and they had to go back to California to shoot a few of the scenes, reshoot some of the scenes. Um, CBS saw the pilot, bought it. It was a very powerful pilot. Uh, Everett Sloan was one of the guest stars, Patty McCormick, Kira Dulay. And it was basically about the, these two young men, Todd and Buzzy, stranded in this very hostile town run by a, a tyrant. And uh, their car breaks down and they need help. And while they're there, they discover a deep, dark secret about the town. And it almost gets them lynched. Well, again, the, the pilot was well cast, well written, well directed. And CBS bought the show. Um, and in October of 1960, the show debuted on Friday night. It, it aired from 8.30 to 9.30, right before Twilight Zone, and right after Rawhide with Clint Eastwood and Eric Fleming and Chev Woolley. And uh, um, it was billed as an action-adventure series. Um, however, CBS uh, wanted more fisticuffs and they wanted more, more women and more romance and uh, I think Herbert B. Leonard and Sterling Selfin resisted that uh, a bit because Chevrolet and the audience that they catered to liked the pilot, liked the realism of the pilot, liked the people's story faction. So uh, although they uh, appeased the network somewhat, they really stuck to their guns and although there was a certain amount of action adventure in the first season, more and more shows were about people and about life and reality. And I would say Route 66 was so important, so appealing, not only because it was filmed against the backdrop of America, each week a different town, each week a different city. You had these two characters that were complete opposites, yet there was a bond between them. Uh, they were very appealing men because they were concerned, caring individuals. Yes, they were searching. Yes, they were looking for work. But they cared about people, and uh, they, along the way, they helped helped a lot of the individuals that they met, and they they met a myriad of characters along the way. Um, the the show, as I said, was filmed in a different location each week, and what they what they would do is they would film in a city, and then within a 50 mile radius, they would travel outside of the city and maybe shoot in this small town, that small town. So they would do maybe two to three shows in a, a specific locale, and then move on. Now, in Philadelphia, they did two shows, The Thin White Line, which is a very good show in the second season, and in The Cat 